Hi here, Vince here, I'm back for another video and Eurovision 2022 was over months ago. I know, I'm late to the party as usual, but you know, I've got to make this video before September now. Look, there's been a lot going on in my life, so I've uploaded lots of videos this summer, but I'm catching up on it and we must talk about the second semi-final of Eurovision 2022. It happened, 18 countries performed, but only 10 could have qualified, and 8 of them we said goodbye to. So let's go through these results, and let me digest all them and talk about the split results, and what I think should have happened, the drama that happened in semi-final 2, and all of that jazz. Let's talk about it. <laughs> So yes, as you can see, Sweden won their semi-final with 396 points and they won their semi-final by a huge margin. I mean, Cornelia kicked ass in the semi-final, really, because she annihilated her competition, considering Australia came second um 243 points in second place that's like a 150 point difference you know so she was really i mean she was always the favorite to win her semi-final but yes it's crazy by this margin it's i think with it goes australia second then serbia third i think with australia it was always going to be a jury song but maybe not such a televote song and it's the other way around with Serbia. It was going to be more of a televote song than a Jewish song. So maybe those two songs dragged down and that's probably why Sweden had a huge lead over those two. Um, so yes, so Sweden won the semi-final. They won the jury vote with 222 points. And then it was Australia in second with 169 points. So even that was a bit of a gap as well. And Sweden won the televote. Well, actually, they came joint first, interestingly enough, with Serbia both getting 174 points. But um, Sweden won the tiebreak, I think. By the way, it's presented out Sweden on top of Serbia on bottom. Uh, but yes, well done, Sweden. Doing well in both the jury and the televote. It's nice to see that. Um, other things to take away... Um, I didn't know Serbia was going to do this well in the semi-final. I'm really surprised that, you know, Serbia did. Look, I've been on a bit of a journey with Serbia this year. Because <laughs> I, I keep it real, you know, Serbia, in Bono, it's not a song that I would download and listen after the contest is finished. I wouldn't, you know. And you know what, I mean... Is it one of my favourites? Not particularly, but I can understand why this did so well, because it is a very popular song, you know, when you go into Bitterslava, Bitterslava, you know, it gets stuck in your head. As I said before, you know, you know, you either love it, hate it, don't like it, like it, but you won't forget about it. That's the thing. Even the ones that really hate the song, you don't forget about it. And I think that really comes across in the televote and that is impressive to do so well in the televote with an early draw she had constructor had to perform in the number three spot and still did so well like lots of people remembered her and that's such a hard draw to get so it kind of proves if you've got something rememberable you know you can still do well with an early draw i think even she could have got the number two spot and still done well in the televote really um Yes, and with Australia, they came s Oh yeah, but with Serbia, going back to Serbia point, they came second in the televote, but they only came eighth with the jury. Now, I can understand that, really. I think, let's keep it real. The Serbian song <laughs> hasn't got much singing to it. I know people, you know, go on about, oh, it's not about the singing. Oh yes, I'm sorry, singing is a key factor. 
In Concerto is not a challenging song to sing. It's pretty much one note. And I think there were some juries that were divided on Serbia. So now let's go through the split results. And let's start off with who the jury would have put through. Uh, the jury would have put through North Macedonia, interesting enough, in 10th place with 56 points. Well, they would have kicked out Romania and put them in 14th place with just 18 points. So let's talk about North Macedonia firstly. They came 10th with the juries, as I just said, but they only came 15th with the public votes with 20 points. And interestingly enough, they became the highest non-qualifier in the semi-final in 11th place, surprisingly. A lot of people said this could be a potential last place in the semi-final. In fact, it was the borderline non-qualifier. Who knew? Um, but I'm actually, in a way, I'm kind of happy they were close to qualify because North Macedonia usually struggles and, you know, they were almost there and, you know, it would have been nice to see North Macedonia again in the final because they rarely qualify and it was quite nice to see they came close because at least it proves they can get the points if they put a good song through. You know, the jury's can vote North Macedonia through, and they would have done. I'm, I'm not surprised the televotes weren't as supportive as the juries. The juries probably awarded Andrea's vocal range, you know, and those vocals of Andrea were very good. I just think the song felt a bit still demo-y when we came to Eurovision still. I think even the revamp, you know, I thought the staging wasn't too bad for North Macedonia's standards. I thought it was it was kind of good, but I think the public probably just saw it as another ballad and quite a bad, heavy semi-final, unfortunately. Um, yeah, most of those 20 points came from ex-Yugoslavia, so... Um, but, you know, you know, I, I wouldn't mind actually seeing Macedonia in the final. It was a good song. You don't want to test my limits. So, so they can get the points, but I just don't think the song was just necessarily strong enough to get them in the final. Um, the Romania point. Now, they came just 14 with the jury, but really well with the public. Fifth in the televote with 100 points. And they came ninth overall with... Um, 118 points. So yeah. Why did the jury drag down Romania? Well, <laughs> you could call it cheap music. I mean, really. Um, the song, you know, maybe they just didn't like it and thought it was a bit cheap. But I, I don't know. I'm happy the televotes did support Romania. I think I'm happy to see that Romanian diaspora come back again um, after like so many years of Romania getting knocked out in the semis, it's good to see, it was, it was good to see them back in the finals. I think it really cut through the ballads and, you know, it's hard to dance and sing at the same time and I think Wars did a really good job and I think, you know, the, the re clove reveal was nice. I think he deserved a place in the final. A lot of people said, oh no, his vocals were off, he shouldn't have got through and I, I disagree, I quite I was quite happy to see him through. I, I was quite happy not to see another ballad get through. But, um, no, I, I disagree with the jury. So the jury was so boring this year. They killed all the fun this year. And that's such a shame. But I'm happy, thank goodness, the public. Top five. And I think he also had a later draw second half. So I think that probably helped him as well. Going to the other side. What the televoters would have put through Cyprus in ninth place with 54 points and would have kicked out Azerbaijan. Now we need to talk the elephant in the room here about Azerbaijan. <laughs> Azerbaijan came sixth with the juries with 96 points. The public put him 18th with zero points. <laughs> A big fat zero and he still qualified. How did that happen? I mean, that is, I mean, this was a big 
surprise. I think this has never happened before where somebody's got zero in one side and has managed to qualify. This was a first for this year. I mean, I'm not surprised he didn't qualify with the public. Because after the, I watched the semi-final um, that night and after I saw the qualifiers, I thought to myself, I thought Azerbaijan was good we're going to qualify, I should say, qualified with the juries and didn't qualify with the televote and come 12th or 13th in the televote. Instead, they came last in the televote with nothing. I did not expect to see that. I mean, I think what happened, but I also noticed that night, after Nadir finished his song, I thought the reaction to the crowds was quite quiet and you know, it was just like very mute and, you know, compared to some of the other acts, it was very quiet and I don't know, I think what hurt him also was the running order. I don't think coming on after Serbia really helped. I think, yeah, coming on after, you know, the, 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 the madness and the correctiveness of Serbia and Constructor, I think, you know, people were still probably talking about, oh, the Serbian woman washing her hands then talking about Nadir from Azerbaijan straight after. I think, yeah, the running order didn't help. Being the first ballad of the night probably didn't help. Had an early draw, and maybe people just didn't connect the song as well. I think maybe it was just a, a, a banging about the weather or something like that. Um, maybe it came across a bit cold to some people, maybe? I don't know, with the staging as well? Maybe they didn't warm to it compared to like a Sheldon Riley, maybe a bit more, or you know, maybe they connected to Sweden a bit more, or Poland a bit more, or Belgium a little bit more. Yeah, but and I didn't expect them to get zero and to still qualify. That that was a huge shock to me. Um, I don't think it deserved zero points. I, this is Azerbaijan's worst televote score ever. <laughs> they still qualified, but you know what? Out of all the countries, I thought Malta would be the one to get zero in the televote because they don't have any friends, they don't have a big diaspora compared to Azerbaijan. That Turkish diaspora vote usually comes in and they had a semi-final where they had some friends. They had Georgia, they had Romania, they had, yeah, maybe not a lot of friends, <laughs> but they had some and to think that none of them gave them any points is really interesting. Cyprus is also a really interesting one. They came ninth in the televote, which would have put them through with 54 points, but they came last with the Jewish, which is nine points. Now, uh, what happened to Andrew Marnie from Cyprus? I mean, this was so unfortunate. This was such a fan favourite. Uh, you know, it's such a shame. Cyprus was such a nice song, you know, it had that Cypriot Greek vibe to it. I thought the staging was nice, I thought the song was nice, but the vocals, what happened? <laughs> she was off key, she was holding back. I thought, I, I was watching the show thinking, why is she holding back? Why is she no, so nervous? Like, yeah, l looking back on the performance, she, her vocals weren't the finest. They really weren't. And, it's not that vocally challenging of a song to mess up your vocals. I think that maybe her helped in a way Serbia, which also didn't have a vocally challenging song, but she sang it well. Well, you know, Cyprus didn't. Um, it's such a shame. That's I like the staging. I like. Yeah, I thought it really the, the water on the stage really suits Cyprus's song. But I, the, she would have got higher. She wouldn't have come most with the juries if she sounded on key because she sounded off key that really damages her chances and yeah i think that also proves like maybe she should have done the pre-parties <laughs> you know she would have at least had experience performing the song live more like i think maybe that came to a bit of a disadvantage for cyprus this year um so yeah that would be interesting you know this is the first cypriot entry to not qualify in nine years so you know bit of a disappointment to Cyprus, you know, they put a lot of effort in it, but yeah, yeah, I guess the nerves just got better for her. And I think the running order, you know, coming on after Sheldon Riley with such impressive vocals then to go to this, with disappointing vocals, 
didn't help. It would have qualified with the public, so maybe the public didn't mind dodgy vocals on the night, but the juries really did, and I think that's what really counted, and that what really helped to Cyprus. And that's probably why they only came 12th in the semi-final, unfortunately. Anything else I need to talk about? Well, let's talk about who finished last in the semi-final, Georgia. Um, they came last with only 22 points. <laughs> um, but they didn't come last in either side, no. Um, they came with the juniors 15th with 13 points, and 17th with the televote with just 9 points. So, overall, they finished last. Um, I thought they would be a bit more of a higher non-qualifier, but I can understand why. I think with Circus Mercus there wasn't that much hype around it when you can feel, when you compare it to more of the other novelty acts this year, like Subwoofer, Seti Zini, um, Zudi Zab from Moldova, even Constructor from Serbia. I think there just wasn't that much hype around Circus Mercus. Um, as well and maybe it kind of got lost in the show because there wasn't much hype around Circus Mercus this year. I don't know, I, I grew to like it, I grew to like the staging, I thought it was very colourful, very creative, but yeah again maybe people were still like in Serbia mode, you know, Serbian washing women, so they were in, enchanted by Serbia, that I think maybe they forgot about Georgia which was also kind of quirky and out of the box, but I think people remembered Serbia more and voted for Serbia more than I think they were with Georgia. And I guess this was always a song that was either going to go do really well or really badly for Georgia and, you know, where it ended up. Um, but yeah, I wonder what Georgia's going to send next year, really. <laughs> Just don't want their junior year version entries, really. Lizzie Pop for 2023, just say, but um, yeah, another last place for Georgia in the semi-final. Happens, yeah, every four years, 2014, 2018, and now 2022. So maybe they'll finish last in the semi-final 2026, who knows? Um, who else? I want to talk about Ireland. Ireland, they came 11th in the televote with 35 points. Um, they gave, we gave the UK's televote 12 points to the Ireland, so yes, <laughs> we've got taste. Um, but the jury has put it 16th from just 12 points. I'm not happy with that. I thought Ireland really improved a lot. I thought Brooke killed it on the night. I thought she really improved. I thought she was going to qualify. I really did. Um, I thought, you know, look, I knew before rehearsals, you know, maybe it was going to be an uphill battle to see Ireland in the finals because you know, their track record, you know, the bookings ranked them last for some reason, you know, they, you know, people were writing them off, people doubted Ireland, so I was kind of thinking, okay, you know, what the ultimate reaction to Ireland is, is a non-qualifier, but then I, I saw the rehearsals and I saw the staging for Ireland, and then I thought to myself, well, why isn't this going to qualify? You know, this looks so good, I think Brooks improved so much, the choreography, the singing, the vocals, the dance, the, the stage, the lines, the camera angles, I thought it was really good, and the, oh, the pyro, good use of pyro, now you see me, now you want me, Oof. oh, and people love Brooke, so I was kind of convinced, no, she's going to make it, the, the televote points are going to go to her, but it wasn't enough, she only came 15th with 47 points, I don't know why the jury's put her third to last with only 12 points. I don't understand that. I thought the staging was on point, I thought the vocals were on point. Maybe they just didn't like the song. Maybe they didn't like the speaking bit and the song. But it was, out of all the songs, I would have thought That's Rich was a very radio-friendly song as well. I, I could see Olivia Rodrigo, you know, singing this song, you know, and she's up there in the charts, so I would say, yeah, this is radio friendly music compared to other songs, but 16th, really? That low? Below San Marino, below Malta even. Only being Cypress and Montenegro, I, I, I don't know. I think the jury's killed the fun. <laughs> the jury's killed the 
fun this year. Um, in both semis, you know. <sighs> but I thought really improved and she should be proud of herself. She was robbed. I'm just saying. <laughs> She was robbed, you know. I thought Brooke, you know, was such a lovely person, so funny. So, told us so many funny stories and so likeable and so nice. And, oh, and people, was, you know, she, she was very popular as well. And I was kind of rooting for her to get through as well. But I guess it just wasn't meant to be. But, but you know what? If the British can do well, I'm sure the Irish can. It seems like every five years they qualify, because 2013 they qualified and didn't qualify again for another five years in 2018. And now we're going to 2023, so it, if the pattern works, Ireland's going to qualify. Um, another one I think people thought could qualify was San Marino, but I didn't. Um, they came, what, 13th with the juries, with 21 points, and 12th with the televoters with 29 points, so neither side put it through. I guess, you know, it just wasn't a good enough song. I'm sorry. People were like, oh, what about San Marino? Where is San Marino? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I just didn't think it was a good enough song. I thought, after seeing Ronello get knocked out in semi-final one, I kind of think, I don't think the sexy votes was going to work with Achille Loro with a weaker song, I would say. I just don't know. I think maybe... I mean, I give San Marino credit for taking a risk. But I just don't know. I just didn't get that vibe he was going to make it through. I thought Finland was better out of the two rock songs on the night. And clearly it shows. Finland came ninth for the jury with 63 points. And they came sixth from the televotes with 99 points. And they came seventh? Overall, with 162 points. So, yeah. I just, I think with San Marino, I think with Achille Lauro, I just felt like he, the impression I got, I felt like Achille Lauro didn't really care that much about Eurovision. Can I say that? The impression I got when watching that semi-final with San Marino and Achille Lauro in it, I just didn't get the vibe that he really cared like his heart wasn't in the right place i don't know i think like, the only reaction i got from him you know in the green room just lying back and like putting his middle fingers up when the recap clips were on so i, I just i felt like the lack of promotion he didn't so do so much interviews as the other contestants so i, I just felt like he didn't care about qualification so maybe that came across to some viewers like i'm I, his reaction was like I've qualified to the final. Meh. I haven't qualified to the final. Meh. You know what I mean? I think maybe it didn't connect with people. I think maybe the staging maybe felt too much in a way. And ultimately, I just don't think it was a strong song. I'm putting it out there. I didn't like the song. I'm sorry. I prefer Finland with Jezebel. That was much better. And I think out of two rock songs that night, Finland killed it. San Marino, I think, tried to go for this punk route. But I just don't think it came across as well um yeah and it yeah yeah other countries that didn't make it oh montenegro i, I need to talk about montenegro i really do <laughs> um well they came 17th of the juries with just 11 points and um, the televoters they, the, the televote put montenegro 14th with 22 points overall they came 17th overall with just 33 points so they came nowhere near of qualification oh it's a shame because if you know actually i was one of the few people that did like the montenegro song this year i really did i liked Velanda's brief you know hear me out i liked it i liked the balkan sound to it even though it wasn't the balkan palette technique because it was in english but i liked the ethnics in this in it i liked the message about a mother and I kind of like the music video, and I was kind of thinking Tamara Tavesky's vibes to it, and could this be Montenegro's best entry? And I said it could be a dark horse, listening to the studio cut, this could really do well for Montenegro. And then we heard it live at the pre-parties, and then my expectations went down a little, 
seeing everybody else's reaction not so positive as mine and then we saw it on the Eurovision stage and ultimately people forgot about it which was sad um, for me <laughs> particularly I, I mean I like the song it, I, I like the song but looking back on it looking back on it it just wasn't as good as I remembered it to be unfortunately I think her vocals did improve from the pre-parties I have to say Valanda's vocals did improve and it wasn't a complete disaster, but I thought the camera angles were a bit off. I think there were some angles where we saw the audience members talk during her song. And it just, the staging looked empty. The graphics, the, oh, I haven't even mentioned the black connected sun in the background, but that really hurt Montenegro. Yeah, I thought the staging looked empty. She was just standing there with her satellite dish trying to get the next channel on her Montenegro TV, it just didn't work. And what should have been a really emotional ballad about her mother just got lost in the show. I think the running order didn't help being surrounded by so many ballads. I don't know who put the running order together with Poland and Montenegro that should get together. That was a complete disaster. But um, yeah, the running order didn't help um, as well. And I think just ultimately in the field of ballads, just People forgot about it and people just didn't connect to it. Which was a shame because it was supposed to be a beautiful ballad and the air is what I breathe, the air is what I need. Right, I know Valanda's vocals did improve, but when you compare it to other vocalists, she was still one of the weaker vocals and that's probably why she came quite low in the juries. <sighs> but she didn't come last in the semi-final and I think she was quite glad she had Serbia and North Macedonia in the semi-final to give her votes but it's a shame it's it's not a complete disaster for montenegro this is better outcome than demol with heaven <laughs> you know it was not on the same levels of badness as that but it could have been so much better yeah yeah it's just, just it's a shame for me because i i was one of the few people that did like montenegro this year and it was a bit of a disappointment to see the outcome it got but I can understand why, and it just wasn't a popular song, and it was kind of expected they weren't going to make it through, sadly. Well, there is one more point I have to make out the semi-final, and there was a bit of a drama going on in the semi-finals. Basically, I don't know what happened, but there were six countries in their juries that all talked to each other about how they were going to vote, and these six countries were, in fact, um... Romania, Azerbaijan, Poland, Montenegro, San Marino, and Georgia. They all spoke to each other about how they were going to vote. They were going to vote for each other, and they put each other in the top six of votings. And, you know, and it was supposed to keep a secret. And it turned out the EBU looked into this and, you know, saw something a bit dodgy in how they voted for each other. And so their jury votes were cancelled with these six countries and said they used an um, alternative voting system of how countries vote and neighbour voting and all that, block, uh, the voting neighbours of how they vote and combine them all together. It's a very complicated system, but, you know, that system kind of <laughs> works. So they went for that system and these were the actual points of... Um, of the new votes that were given out. Um, I have to point out if they did use the points that that the original points for those six countries, um, the ten qualifiers would remain the same. There would be no change in that, but there were would have been changes that Malta would have came last in the semi-final, and Ireland would have come second to last, which I'm having none of that. <laughs> I think Montenegro would have been higher non-qualifier and San Marino would have been the 11th or 12th non-qualifier I believe um so it was just just changing rankings of that um now this is a whole controversy of course this should have never happened you know this is why you need more music experts on a panel basically is my opinion next year make it tech personally and I think also I think music experts should write down a reason of why they put so many points to this song as well, like like a sentence or two, 
just explain why some reasoning behind it than just generic giving votes. You know, um, yeah, this shouldn't have happened, and I am upset with these six countries, I've got to say, especially countries that, you know, their songs that I've rerouted for, but let's not have hatred with these artists that have been representing these countries, you know. Let's not spread hate to Veland or Wars or even Achille Loro. They had nothing to do with it. In fact, I don't think even their delegations had anything to do with it. In fact, the ones that we should blame are the jury members themselves. Honestly, um, yeah, I mean, also what was also shocking is that they were kind of putting Sweden and Australia near their bottoms of their voting systems, which is, you know, it's just not on, you know, that could really affect the result in a way we could have had a different result, uh, qualifiers as well. And, you know, this kind of proves, you know, we need to make changes with the jury systems to prevent this happening again. Um, but it was not on. It was not on. And I am upset by some of these countries. I think some of these countries could have done a, a lot better and are better than this, really. Um, yeah, it's just one of those things, really. <sighs> that shouldn't have happened. And, yeah. Um, and also it damages because it kind of gives, like, a bad reputation their countries like Montenegro wasn't a popular song in the first place and now it's probably even more unpopular because they were part of this system like like people probably complained why <laughs> Montenegro was second in some of these jury rankings you know and you know that's upsetting you know I don't blame you know like putting Montenegro as the best song second best song in the semis because, you know, maybe some jury members saw something in Montenegro. What I think is more hurting is like putting like a country like Sweden, Australia near the bottom of the jury. So it's probably more damaging because then they don't get any points and could re be damaged by any points. But anyway, um, but luckily the EBU saw something in this and stopped it immediately. And yeah, I kind of wish, you know, next year we just get 10 music experts on a panel. Because if you have six people on the Eurovision stage, why have less be a part of the jury? You know, when you go to court, you need 12 people in a jury, you know, system. You know, why only have five at Eurovision? It doesn't make any sense, really. <laughs> it really doesn't. But hopefully they will fix this this next year, or hopefully they will do something next year for this preventing happening again. Ah, <sighs> come on. In any case, what did you think of semi-final two of Eurovision 2022? Were you happy with some of the qualifiers? Were you shocked by some of the split results? Comment down below in the comment section below. Like and subscribe to this video and I'll be back for more content very soon. So, goodbye people, goodbye.